think we're in for a good one today, folks. We got Joel Bauman joining us. King Bow. We'll get into the persona. I definitely want to ask about the music here in a little bit, but I want to start off with the fight career. And I heard that came from a wrestling background. Yeah, well, uh, somewhat. So I wrestled in. So I always knew I wanted to fight. That was when I was in um, fourth grade. I rented a UFC video game. It was for the Sega Dreamcast. And uh, started. I was playing that, and I said, if that was a real thing, I wanted to do that someday. Before I even knew what the UFC was, I had wrote a paper about it in fourth grade, literally about me want because Bruce Lee was my idol, and I wanted to bring together all the best fighters in the world and like make my own thing and have people fight each other to see what the best was. And uh, at that point in time, I would like play around with my friends and like try to have them hit me while I would wrestle them. So I was already like. It was, it was always in my, my wheelhouse. And the reason I decided to wrestle in college was because I knew that would give me the best opportunity to fight in the UFC in the future because I saw some of the wrestlers there. So I said if I was a national champion or an All-American at the University of Minnesota, which was a, you know, a national championship wrestling team, we were the number one team in the nation when I was there, it's like, yeah, that would, that would put me there. That would allow me. I, would, I had an opportunity to play, to play football. But that wouldn't have led me, that wouldn't have gave me the mental toughness, that wouldn't have gave me the, you know what I mean? I don't believe that would have done that. So that's why I chose wrestling. Um, but ultimately what led me to fight was I was in the business world. I had left college. I was uh, making you know, some good money doing affiliate slash network marketing, just kind of living, living a, a very blessed life. And my company had started this program called buy one nourish two so we have this amazing technology called ace man and that pretty much creates stem cells in the body right for for humans this this technology has been used to save thousands of children overseas um, from a guy named sam castor so our buy one nourish two program if you take the product you'll feed a child right and our goal is to eradicate childhood malnutrition from this planet so i'm sitting i'm sitting at a conference and i'm listening to us like you know be able to um they're launching this program and i just said man, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm not living my dream though, because I was kind of miserable. I was making music. I was a stay-at-home dad with my twin boys. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm living a dream life. I'm um, in the best shape of my life, international health trainer, speaker. You know, I'm speaking on stage in front of thousands of people, but I'm not doing everything I want to do. I'm miserable inside. I'm like, you know, I'm not fighting. I tried to, I went back and wrestled at the, uh, the Olympic slash world level after being off and not wrestling for like four years came back jumped up uh, after winning a tournament on the eighth and the ladder for the uh, you know for 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 in the nation um so like that was also another dream of mine was to be an olympic champ but nothing fulfilled like was in my heart like being a fighter that, that was it i wanted to be the best fighter in the world that's always been my dream so after they had said that and they launched that from stage i said I have to fight. There's no more excuse. Because if I become the greatest fighter in the world, these children will be saved. This bracelet that I'm wearing, it says Hope 100,000. That means I fed 100,000 kids in my program. You know, I just hit a million this last year. My goal is to feed, in my fight career, over 100 million children. That's the goal. You know, that's the end game. So, literally, by fighting, I make a global impact. By building my brand and being the best that I can be, I save, I save the world. You know what I mean? And how did this journey lead you to where we are right now, Albuquerque, Mexico, Jackson, Lincoln? <laughs> so, um, I always have, I've, I've had this thing that's like an upper limit. Let's, it, I, it, there's a book called The Big Leap by Gay, Gay Hendricks. And uh, Gay Hendricks talks about how we get to a point where we start self-sabotaging ourselves a lot of the time, like, because we're afraid of our greatest potential. So at home, you know, my first three professional fights, a lot of people don't know, like, the backstory behind that. In every single one of my first, like, three professional fights, some shit was, like, going on in my life. You know what I mean? Just, just, just a whole bunch of stuff was going on. And uh, I never really took those fights seriously. I'd always train for, like about a month because I was always given like four week notice for those fights so I'm just always kind of in shape but I'm not necessarily in the gym fully until I know I have a fight right so I take uh you know about a month uh, or a month I, I train for four weeks then take two weeks to lose the weight um and then I'd win the fights you know fairly easily you know and uh after my last fight 
you know, I just I should have won that fight 99 out of 100 times. And we, we kind of talked about it, you know, life decisions, gonorrhea in the nuts, shot in my ass the day before the fight. Um, it, like, and I have no shame in any of this. Like, I don't care. But it's just like I, I was living a life where I'm sabotaging myself. You know what I mean? I'm allowing myself to sabotage myself because I know I'm good enough to just step up and compete. I can ha and, and if I lose, I have the excuse of, ah, oh, shit. This, I mean, I'm saying it right now. I have the excuse. Hey, I, this was going on. This was going on. My team and I, my best friends, you know, one of my, one of my best friends, his name is Xavier, and he does music. He's killing it in Atlanta right now, um, working with some pretty big people out there. And uh, we just kind of sat down, and our goal is to take over music. Our goal is to take over entertainment. Our goal is to take over everything, right? Um, and he just said, you know what, we need to, it's time for you to go to a big gym after that loss. And I was like, you know, I, I have kids, and all I was thinking about is I didn't want to leave my kids. I don't want to leave my family, you know? But now I look at it like this. I told Coach Wink, two years to a belt when I first got here because that's how much time I'm willing to be away from my kids. You understand what I'm saying? Because they're still up in Minnesota. So it's gonna take me two years to give them the life that they want, that they're, that, that they're gonna know that daddy fought for and, and solidify the legacy, solidify the story, you know? Um, and that's kind of how we ended up here. And, and, I, and the, other, the other reason I wanted to come here was John Jones is here. There's some of the best fighters are here. And here I am in my mind. I'm thinking I am. I am the be I'm of the best fighters right now. I know this. I believe this in my heart. I wanted it to be verified. You understand what I'm saying? I want that to be verified by someone like a Coach Wink or a Greg Jackson. If if they tell me that I am where I believe I am, that kind of sets out all excuses. Now I can just be that thing. And over the course of of this last year, I'm blessed and I am grateful to say that I, I know that they know now. They believe it. You know, I came in as the crazy guy <laughs> saying, you know, I was going to be the, you know, I, I was what I thought I was. And now it's, uh, it's like they're, they're behind it. So how can I not now live my full potential? How can I make any fucking excuse? That's bullshit. You know what I mean? Now I have to go. Now it's all on the line. So now since it's all on the line and I know what I know, it will be done. Next fight is LFA 104. We're going to see you against Julian LeBlanc. Thank, Thank you, you Julian. Thank you for actually taking the fight. I've had 12 fights turned down in the last year and a half. And I just want to say that I'm grateful for you and the fact that you're willing to be a martial artist. I mean, you see people nowadays, they they take easy fights. I've never wanted to take an easy fight. That's why I'm willing to do things like take a two week notice fight, you know, go up a weight class against an uh, undefeated guy who has seven more fights. I don't give a fuck. I'm here to be the greatest of all time. So the fact that you're willing to take the fight, I appreciate you, brother. You're a real martial artist. I respect you. <clears throat> what do you think about the fight? How's it gonna play out? I've seen his style. He's a southpaw. He likes to strike. He's a finisher. <laughs> I'm here to be the greatest of all time. I'm grateful he took the fight. I'm not here to talk down on anybody. I'm not here to say I am better than anybody because we're all human and I'm in my zen. The truth will be shown. And it's obviously very important to you that this is, at least you're getting back to be able to compete. No, this is the most, when I first started fighting, I was afraid to hurt people. You understand what I like? My, people don't know my journey. I had, before fighting, I had let people spit in my face and not do anything. I had let people slap me. Because deep down I have this thing in me that is very dark and very nasty. And I will never allow that thing to take control of me. However... When I first started fighting, I was afraid to hurt people. That's always been my thing. The reason I never got in a street fight is because I know if I punch you as hard as I can, I could probably kill you, or if I don't kill you, you get knocked out, you hit your head, and then I go to jail for the rest of my life. 
that's my life. That's stupid. That's dumb. So even in fighting, I always had to get over the fact of going hard with people because I know I could hurt people. My goal is not to hurt people. You just heard I want to save the world. My goal is to be the best fighter and athlete that I can be. And what I've had to learn, this has been a spiritual awakening for me in, in, in a lot of sense, is that now since they saw the dotted line, that means that I have to hurt them, essentially. Or they're consenting to me being able to do what I need to do to win. That has been my biggest aha since I've been here. By, ver by validating and verifying my own skill being here, I now have no quarrels with that in, in my stomach anymore. I know that this is a part of the game. He's coming here to hurt me. Okay. <laughs> I get excited for that now. I used to get nervous. I've never been this calm and this cerebral and this nervous or this, this, um, this focused with no nervousness. You know, they say that you're supposed to have a little bit of nerves. It's more excitement. I'm going into this fight thinking my mantra is I'm going to have more fun than you. That's a different mindset. That's taking my training to the whole next level. Because if I'm competing and I'm going, I'm going to have more fun than you. Now you have to keep up with that. You have to keep up with the, the thought of he's having fun doing all of this. He's enjoying it. So now are you going to rise to the occasion? Or are you going to let fear and doubt and worry creep in your mind? It's all psychological, you know? We went deep into the fight game now. And I already promised that we were going to get to another side of you. We mentioned it when we started the nickname, King Bao. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the music career and that outlet. Oh, so, I mean, I've been doing music for ever since high school. A lot of people don't know I started doing music. You know, I would sit in front of my webcam and rap <laughs> and put it up on YouTube when YouTube was first out. And at one point in time, I had 30,000 views on like eight videos. And that was back in, I mean, what? That was back in like 2007, 2008. And uh, when I hit college, I just tweeted this, you know, I. I don't know why I've never fully believed in myself, but I've forgiven myself for it, and that's all that matters. I just tweeted that. Because when I was a kid, I always doubted myself. Even though I was dope, I always doubted myself. My entire music career is essentially me doubting myself. I started to make beats um, once I was, once I started to have some financial freedom from the business world, doing everything that I told you about before. Um, I would sit around for all day and make music. I didn't leave my run, I barely left my house the first two weeks I was able to finally buy some, some equipment to make beats because I just wanted to learn the program. I'm, a, I'm an obsessive learner. So I sat there, made music because, because my producer said, he was always in my ear going, Joel, you can do this. Joel, you can do this. And he worked for the Black Eyed Peas, Casey Golden, Good Look Studios um, in, in Northeast Minneapolis. Um, so I was just like, I know I can do this. Another more encouragement, ver verification, validation. So I started to make my own beats over the course of the last four, four, or over the course of the last six, seven years. Um, I've learned how to mix and master and kind of do everything on my own now. So uh, my goal is to be again. It's to take over everything. You know, I want to battle rap, high smack. <laughs> You'll know soon enough. I want to do all, all sorts of entertainment, comedy, skits, music. I want to be everything, you know? And I believe that my music speaks for itself. When you understand, I, I believe I'm of the greatest concept writers in the world when you figure it out. And those, those who are my fans, they understand. My concepts, I believe, are next level. You know, and the fact that I create the worlds and I make the music and I make the beats and I, produce, I do all my own shit it will speak for itself, but that's why we have to fight. We have to get the word out. Because up until 66 days ago, I wasn't talking shit on social media. You know, I wasn't doing anything like that. I was staying to myself and just working in the dark. But now I see the game. I know that people are, people are stupid and they need to be entertained. You know, you gotta capture people's attention. So now I just, I do this Logan Paul call out challenge thing on TikTok and, uh, I call out Logan and Jake Paul to a boxing fight every single and that will happen. It will happen. 
I call it Jake and Logan Paul do a boxing fight every single day. And I also uh, am looking to get in a three-way relationship with Lana Rhodes. It's the Lana Rhodes Thrupple Challenge. So we're on day 66 of the Logan Paul, or day 67 of the Logan Paul Call Challenge. And um, day 46 of the Lana Rhodes Thrupple Challenge. So yeah, it's, a, it's all good stuff. It's entertainment. People need to be entertained. How much fun are you having with fight week with the challenge with everything right now how much fun is it my life is fun i've never been if you ask anybody in my close circle they've never seen me vibrate like this before the first time i probably vibrated like this is when i when i when i was building my business hard and i started to make a lot of money at a young age and i was just being boisterous i was being me I was being, but i was stuck in my ego you understand what i'm saying i thought oh i'm oh, huh. i hadn't been humbled yet my last <laughs> <laughs> shit. My last eight years of my life has just been a humbling. Are you as dope as you think you are? You know? But if you're as dope as you think you are, can you still be humble and likable and love people? Because at one point in time, even in my business, I loved helping people. My company's products were changing lives, and I'm going around pretty much making money from speaking and telling people about these incredible technologies. And at one point in time, I started to hate people. Because I would have to sit and argue with people who, who were living in their ego. Here I have all the information in the world on the amazing technology that can change your life, but you want to sit here and argue with me, who is way healthier than you, about if this is going to work for you or not, when we have a guarantee in science behind all of our products, you're a moron. So I just started to get bitter. I just started to hate people. And now, I'm having fun every day. I'm creating. I'm zen. I get verified. You understand what I'm saying? By being here, everybody is aware. Everybody's behind me, and I'm just blessed, man. Life is fun. Comedy is the highest form of enlightenment, and I make myself laugh all of the time. And how can everybody check out your forms of entertainment that you're providing? Yeah, at underscore King Bao, K-I-N-G, B-A-U, everywhere. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, underscore King Bao. Um, music is on Spotify, iTunes. We're going to start selling NFTs too soon, so... You know, I said I was the greatest concept writer of all time. You're going to be able to purchase these concepts yourself. Fountain of Youth is one of the greatest songs of all time when you understand the concept. Make sure you cop that for a couple mil. <laughs> oh, fun. And can we get a last word on LFA 104? Ascension.